Well, somehow we find ourselves outside of the relegation zone and today we could secure it for real. Premier League survival is looking on the cards. How's it going? Welcome back to some more Football Manager 2024 and another part of non-league to Champions League with South Shields. Today we are back with possibly two um, or more Premier League matches against uh, Crystal Palace, Bournemouth, Leicester, Chelsea. Um, it could, could be all of them as we look to secure survival in the Premier League and uh, have a, a third consecutive stay in the Premier League's elite. And uh, yeah, I mean, as I say, it's it's been an unbelievable uh, journey in the second half of the season. And it was it was all down to this run here, which you saw um, a decent amount of. Um, of course, <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's always going to be um, crazy when you win six of seven in a month and that's what has turned our season around at the end of the day we uh, we we got a lot of points there um of which we we weren't really picking up points earlier this season uh we went through a bit of a dry spell after losing to Fulham and Everton we lost a 5-1 to Liverpool but this was just an unbelievable match. I've, I've not seen anything like it in Football Manager. We had uh, a 4.5 xG, they had a 2.5 xG. I mean this was just absolutely a bonkers. 6-5 against Tottenham away from home. Probably the 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 craziest result I've I've ever had um just in terms of absolute topsy-turvy. We went 2-0 up pretty quickly. Gressman uh, getting the first goal there. Then Douglas Louise uh, was pushing forward. Um, and then it was Husa who got it uh, to, to Beto. And then uh, what a finish from Beto there. And, and he's been a real star this season. Don't think we will... Um, take him next year and this I mean look at that for a header you don't often see that in football manager it was pretty crazy but then Tottenham were on the on the comeback trail um I think they had a disallowed goal at one point and then Rasmus Hoyland absolute banger into the back of the net there and then just before half time it was uh Heartbreak for us as Hoyland made it Tottenham three South Shields two and we thought two nil up in this half it felt like we should have been in the lead. Uh, but then Chamadi ran past the outside. What a header it was from Bontanelli, uh, who puts it into the back of the net. 3-3 as the halftime whistle blows. Then Tottenham get themselves a corner. 4-3. They take the lead. And then we have a brilliant 10 minutes here. Chamadi to Gonzaga. Gonzaga forward to Beto. Beto smacks it into the back of the net. That makes it 4 all. And then... We take the lead. Here's Chamadiu on the right-hand side. He gets it into Gressman, and this was a great finish um, from Gonzaga in the end. And then a beautiful cross from uh, Jack Allen. Beto couldn't quite get there. Chamadiu was the one to whip it in, and there was Grassman to put it into the back of the net. Makes it 6-4, and then here come Tottenham just before the final whistle to give us something to be fearful of. Evan Ferguson makes it 6-5, an 11-goal thriller, and uh, probably the, the game that will keep us in the league, ultimately. Uh, we then drew 3-3 against Man United. We were 3-1 up in this match, Bontanali and Louise scoring, but uh, a 93rd-minute equaliser for Man United broke our hearts. We were then back at the Sir Robert Briggs Arena, Following our expansion, a 20,000 capacity crowd, um, a battle with a brace there, and Gressman and Marakal helping us to a 4 2 victory over the Toon Army. Uh, but most recently, we lost 2 1 to Aston Villa. Again, a very, very late um, winner for Aston Villa, a 95th minute penalty. Uh, stealing an extra point off us there. So we are 16th in the league right now. We're three points clear of uh, Brentford and we're just two points behind where we were 
uh, this time last season when we did indeed stay up. We got 36 points last year. Um, if we win one of our final four games, you would imagine that that will be just about enough. We've got Crystal Palace today, so fingers crossed we can get that three points and get over the line. But um, yeah, it's it's been a an insane few months it really has um but now we need to we need to put it into practice we need to get over the line and get ourselves safe in the premier league so this is the team that we're going to put out there today hoy and hal will start and go with chamadeo naroki uh, marical and allen in defense we've got louise and uh, lewis skelly holding the midfield with gressman hassan and bontanali starting behind beto up top so here we go then um, Crystal Palace start the season very, very well. They were, of course, uh, championship champions. They had a lot of momentum behind them, a little bit like uh, we did, I suppose, when we came up. And um, they had a, a very good first half of the year, but they have struggled massively um, since then. But uh, welcome to our brand new expanded Sir Robert Briggs Arena looking brilliant. And it's great to be home, great to be playing in Shields once again. I, I, don't think we had the worst record um, in the end at, at uh, the Stadium of Light, but uh, it is good to be back where we belong. But Crystal Palace, five minutes into this match, make it 1-0. And one possibility I've not really considered is if Crystal Palace go and win this game today, we head back down to 17th and then we're bang in trouble again. Brentford are playing uh, Sunderland. So it could all change in this match if Crystal Palace were to get over the line. But fingers crossed it won't come to that um, and we can we can put in a strong performance here. Phillips gets it towards uh, Bazdar. Now to Mitchell on this left-hand side. This is a good run from Crystal Palace, but Naroki's got it back. Here's Chamadeu, who has been... Incredible recently. Here's a Grassman. Gets it to Lewis Skelly. Lewis Skelly over to Grassman again. He finds Chamadeu in his element into the middle. It goes and there's a Bontanali with a, a brilliant, thunderous header and makes it one all. I mean, that what a feature of our game that has been over these last few matches. Uh, a, Chamadeo cross pinpoint from him and Bontanali getting in there with a thundering header and makes it one all. Let's just have a little look at his heading ability. 14, jump and reaches 13 as well. He's a, a decent sized lad, I think. Um, so, yeah, very interesting. Wouldn't have necessarily, um, you know, had him down as that, but uh, he's doing really well. There's Hassan, he shoots. And here's uh, Gressman, gets it back to Lewis Skelly. Over the bar. Wow. <laughs> this match is intense so far. Let's keep an eye on that Brentford score as well. Um, but, I mean, Tottenham, they're getting dragged into this as well. After that 6-5 defeat to us, they will be looking over their shoulders slightly in these uh, remaining matches, especially if Brentford win today. That's, that's the big one. If Brentford win... If they beat Sunderland, um, pretty much everybody up to 12th can still be relegated realistically. So we, we've we've got to bear that in mind. Um, oh, here comes the ball forward. Hoy and Hal comes out very, very solid there. And uh, I've gone with Hoy and Hal because he's the younger option. Um, and has, in fact, had more clean sheets than Peretz this year even though he's played a whole lot less. Now, I think Beto was offside there. I'm hoping I'm wrong. I couldn't quite tell if uh, the assistant had his flag up. Oh, it's awarded. Come on, Beto makes it 2-1. Was that 14th goal this season? And Bontanali, I mean, what an interception from him and a good pass there. Excellent first-time finish from Beto. I mean, do we give him a, a year's contract um, for next season? Because he he still seems to be able to do it. We'll, we'll have a good investigate of his physicals and, and see if he can cope with being a backup option. As I say, I think we have to put all of our eggs into 
um, a real star striker next year because that that's what we're we're really struggling with um, is finishing. But maybe that guy Protogenes Bontanelli is the man to put up top because that is absolutely incredible. We are rocking the Sir Robert Briggs Arena at the moment. That was ridiculously good. I mean. Keeper, no idea what you're doing, mate. Beto gets it back. Bontanali sticks it in the back of the net. And it's now South Shields 3, Crystal Palace 1. Quite unbelievable. Really quite unbelievable how well this is going. Um, let's keep an eye on, on everything that's happening. Here's Jack Allen. Be nice to get a fourth here. I think that would absolutely seal it. Grassman with the header. And it's in. Beto with his second there. Grassman... Almost, almost getting the, the, the goal. Didn't quite manage it. Um, but we, we certainly seem to have an excellent uh, attack and midfield lineup. And I'm very, very happy about that. Um, Brentford still nil nil with Sunderland, by the way. But th this is what we needed to really put in a statement there. Chamadi with uh, a, an interesting ball forward. I'm worried for uh, the Crystal Palace goalkeeper here. Here's uh, Bontanali gets it forward to Beto. Both of them are on a hat-trick, by the way. Who's going to get there first? Naroki on the ball. Gets it to Marical. You feel like there's more goals to come. We are in our element now. Naroki. Bombing forward, Chamadeu now. Chamadeu possibly going himself. Lewis Skelly, he has Jack Allen now. Jack Allen into the middle and there's Hassan. Ahmed Hassan steps up, puts it into the back of the net. He's recently put in a, a transfer request because he just feels like he should be starting every single match. But when we've got Minty in there, we've got Gressman now, uh, Gonzaga, of course. We do want to, to sort of rotate it around a little bit and keep everybody fresh and... He's just not very happy with that. Right, Gressman is going to come off and we are going to put Minty on. Uh, mm, that's not a very good pass. Here's Dobbin now. Dobbin for Crystal Palace. Good save from Hoy and Hal. Needed that. 25 minutes to go. Here's Chamadeu. Gets it to Naroki. Now to Marical. Marical finds Allen. Allen on this left-hand side. He whips it in, and there it is again. Ahmed Hassan is now on a hat-trick. It's South Shield 6, Crystal Palace 1. And this is doing wonders for our goal difference as well. This is bonkers. I mean, we could finish as high as 13th in this league. Burnley have taken the lead against Red, and they're still... Fighting for European football, which is crazy. Yeah, Tottenham lost to Arsenal earlier in the day. Um, so they're, they're banging trouble here. Brentford, if if Brentford win against Sunderland, that brings Tottenham into the relegation battle, uh, which I kind of want to happen. But <laughs> equally, I'd be very happy for... Um, for... Brentford to lose because that would give us a six-point buffer with three games to go. We're going to bring off all of the, the guys on two goals. Uh, I don't want to be seen as any favouritism there. We'll get them all less stand innovation. They have been incredible. Um, but uh, some of them needed to come off because of fitness and uh, yeah, we just needed to do that. Brighton have taken the lead against West Ham. They're in trouble now, West Ham. But there it is, a brilliant 6-1 victory. You've got to say, that was unbelievable. Hassan's uh, not happy that he, he came off, didn't get the chance to get his hat-trick. And, and I get that, I understand that. But, um, wow, I mean, Bontanali. Oh, what a player this guy is. And what a signing. You know, £12 million, you really, you can't do better than that. Um, I'm just so glad that he came up on the scout reports. We were able to get him on the cheap and, uh, well, hopefully, hopefully he's somebody that uh, will continue pl to, to play well for us. 10 goals and an assist in uh, 14 appearances since coming in January. You've got to say he's been a massively influential part of us, I would say, staying in the league now. And uh, I mean, you just can't, you can't believe it. I mean, look at this. Look at our season. We were 19th 
since pretty much day one. I mean, we were 16th after the opening day. Um, we were 17th after beating Brentford um, on the fifth game of the season on the 7th of September. But since then, we were locked in the relegation zone um, quite far adrift as well. I think we were 15 points adrift at some point. But um, we got out of the relegation zone with that, that win over Newcastle. And now we're keeping our heads uh, above water somewhat. There's Crystal Palace's decline. West Ham have struggled this season. Fulham, massive decline from them. I think they're, they're going down this season. Um, they're on 30 points. It's going to be a big ask for them to to stay up but uh, let's see if we can confirm our stay in the Premier League with a result against Bournemouth well I didn't think this day would ever come we have maxed out our coaching badge we are now officially the best coach that we can be continental a pro license and uh, yeah I mean it's been amazing um, <laughs> and Tommy Miller has been with me since the start of it all um, it's quite amazing, you know, working together for for so long. Um, it's been crazy. He's had so many approaches from sort of League Two sides, League One sides to, to become their manager. But every time he has stuck by us and I'm delighted, absolutely delighted. We've got our coaching badges now. It's uh, it's all looking good. Right then, just the uh, one change for, or two changes actually, for this match. Uh, Jamal Gonzaga comes back in in the attacking midfield role, and Husa comes back in in central defence for Naroki. Um, I, I mean, Bournemouth are very much safe in this division. They've probably not got a hell of a lot to play for. Um, so hopefully, we can go out there and and give them a, a bit of a batter in. We are in in negotiations with Everton on uh, keeping Beto's loan deal uh, permanent for next season. And, you know, I, w I would be of the opinion if we can get him on a, a year's contract, he's definitely worth having. You know, looking at his physicals, I don't think he's uh, going to massively decline over the next year or so. So I think that would be an excellent bit of experience to have in there. And uh, he's in a, a great vein of form at the moment. He's just one player of the month. Um, he's scoring a ton of goals and um, could be the, the guy to, to help bed in the, the, the new boy next season. I'm hoping that we can get somebody young um, obviously David Washington came in a, a couple of years ago and, and did an unbelievable job um, but he's just not done it this season for, for one reason or another you know I think he's had um, real difficulty holding his place down in the side this year because of his injury troubles and um, Semedo joining I, I don't think Semedo's cut out for the Premier League and um, I think we'll be trying to move him on in the summer. Um, but yeah, Bournemouth have gone one nil up. We're we're just pretending that that's not happened. He has Gressman with a free kick. He's been pretty decent with free kicks and hits the bar. But there's uh, Husa. Well, I wasn't expecting the follow up to go into the back of the net. Is he on side? Is he on side? I'm not entirely sure here. Yes, he must have been. So there was Gressman. I mean, what a shot that was. I'd love to see Gressman's free kick taking ability. Um, 14, apparently. So he's not quite, you know, Robert Briggs level. <laughs> um, but we'll take that. And this would get us to 40 points. If we were to win today against Bournemouth, this would get us to the magic 40, which um, is usually enough to stay in the Premier League. However, uh, it, it's... It's not guaranteed this season, um, although it would put us outside of Brentford, I think. Excellent goal for Bontanali, and he is another player that's in an incredible, rich vein of form. Chamadeo has been awesome on that uh, right fullback position, you know, doing what John Lafourou did all those years. Just putting it on a sixpence and Bontanali just seems to, to hook up with Chamadeu absolutely perfectly. And, uh, well, it's 2-1 here. And as it stands, we are staying in the Premier League here as Gressman gets it in. And that could have been three there. 
I think we've got to praise the boys because they are playing out of their skin. I know Bournemouth scored early on, but uh, this is incredible. Incredible play and just really attractive to watch as well. And I think that's what you've got to... You've got to credit the boys that, you know, we've not just ground out a load of results. We've went all out attack and and it's worked. Um, some games we've dropped points, but most of the time we are scoring one more than the opposition. He has a chance for Bournemouth. Should have been two or uh, two all there. Right. Oh, my God. We move up to 13th. 13th. <laughs> Oh my God. I mean, this is just unbelievable. It really is. You know, I think we've we've been incredibly, incredibly fortunate to, to have this run of form. And I think lots of other teams have, have stumbled. You know, it looked... Um, oh my God, Gonzaga's just scored a worldie there. Um, it looked in January, Feb time that you were going to need 42, 43 points to stay in the division. And I think... We, we're, we're just about going to reach that. Um, but some of the other teams have faltered. Fulham have dropped off a cliff. Crystal Palace are, are ones that have dropped off a cliff. I wasn't expecting them to be in the fight. And, and they have been. Um, and that's a shame for them. But it's 3-1 at half time. We're playing really, really well here. And I mean, if we, if we beat Bournemouth today... If we give Leicester a good hiding, I mean, Leicester and Chelsea, they are top four teams. So I don't think we're going to have much fun in those. Here's Gonzaga with a chance. Over the bar it goes. Um, I think Gressman's going to come off. I think let's put Ahmed uh, Hassan, who scored two goals in the last game. It was very harsh of me to drop him. But um, we'll bring David Washington on because I'd really love for it to work out for him. Morel's going to come on. De Silva's uh, going to come on as well. And uh, we're going to give Brody Hughes some minutes. He's not somebody that's played a lot this season, but he's such a useful player. Obviously can play um, right back, left back, through the middle, can also play defensive midfield, I think. So really, really... Uh, versatile player that is is good to keep around the club so let's see what he can do here's Chamadiu that's uh, back out towards uh, Jack Allen who is somebody that's uh, come come alive as well um, in the in recent weeks uh, with uh, plenty of first team footballers Josh De Silva going for glory there didn't quite come off here's Chamadiu now Chamadiu on the right hand side and now, oh, I thought Hassan was going to go for it. Here's Alan. Alan forward to Bontanali. That's forward to Hassan. Chamadeu on the right hand side. He whips it in now. And there's the header from Bontanali. How's that not gone in? <laughs> it rolled along the line. Oh my God, that was ridiculous. But Bontanali again with the header. Kellyman whips it in. Hoyenhal punches clear. There's a header forward, header away by Brody Hughes. Allen now gets it to Bontanali. Another long, long highlight, but there's the goal line technology. How on earth that didn't go in is anyone's guess. Um, but yeah, as I say, Leicester, a fourth place. They're fighting for Champions League football. Chelsea have uh, have won the Premier League again, which is, is awesome. Um, where are Man City? Man City a fifth, so obviously we, we had the option to join them earlier in this season. I don't know what quite would have happened if we would have taken that job. Would we have been able to get them back into the title fight? Certainly on the evidence of our form in the second half of the season. Maybe. Here's De Silva. Gets it to Morel now. Hughes. Hughes on it. But what I'm really excited about is when you take momentum into a new season, you generally start it. Um, as well as you can and it could be a really exciting year for the club next year as Hassan so close to making it four but we do need to make sure we get over the line here David Washington apparently not having a good game and I think we could see the back of him this summer which would be a real shame because he was such an exciting player but Unfortunately, just hasn't been good enough this year. 
maybe with a, a full pre-season behind him, we, we might see a return to form next season. Here's uh, Justin Clivert with a great chance from a free kick. I think this is going to go in. Oh, what a free kick that was. And that's, I think, what we lack in the team is somebody that can do that. Those special moments from just outside the area, dink it into the top right corner, Justin Clivert scores. I mean, how old is he now? 32. He's probably somebody we could we could buy and get in there. Um, but we do win 3-2, and again, it's that old adage of uh, we will score one more than you, and we certainly did that. And there are the th four words that we wanted to see today. South Shields, avoid relegation. Thank the Lord. I mean, it, it didn't look like we were going to do this, but I think we recruited well in January. You know, the players that we signed in January um, were Bontanali and Gressman. Um, we also signed Jose Carlos. He's barely played and actually wants to go home. Um, he's homesick. So we are going to be getting rid of him more than likely um, over the summer. But Gressman's been incredible. You know, we signed him from Malmo and uh, he's on a 7.32, three goals, two assists in 10 appearances. And Bontanali, I mean, what a player. 11 goals, an assist, two player of the matches. You just can't say fairer than that. That has been brilliant. Um, Clayton not scoring championship goals. That's a, a shame for him. Akomia, how's he doing? Uh, he's doing well at Leeds. He is joining them permanently as well. Uh, Sam Raksaki, how's he getting on in Hetaf? Oh, he's, he's playing La Liga matches. I'm, I'm surprised at that. Stefan Ronco. Oh, he's having a good season. It's in the Vanarama National League North, but um, all six foot seven of him uh, is is still doing well. Right, uh, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to play the, the final two matches against Leicester and Chelsea, and I'll see you guys uh, at the end of the season. So there we have it then, the end of the season. Uh, a really good performance against Leicester. We beat them 3-1, Beto, uh, Bontanali and Gonzaga scoring in that one. And uh, then we finished off with a 2-2 draw at Champions Chelsea with uh, Bontanali getting two goals. And uh, what an end to the season. I mean, if you look since the turn of Feb, it, it completely turned our season. And I think a lot... Of that is to do with the FA Cup. Um, you know, good run in that I think really did help us. So fingers crossed uh we can we can go with that again next year and and, and do a good job with it. Uh, a couple of very, very close victories, the five four against Burnley and of course the six five against Tottenham. That was six points that really we shouldn't have had, but we end the year in 12th place, depending on how Bournemouth get on in their final match against Man City. I would imagine they're not going to win it. Um, it's it's a weird situation that we've played our match before all of these guys uh, for some reason. But um, yeah, it, it, it's it's been quite unbelievable, but you take six points off that and we, we still um, had enough, which is, is great to see. Bontanali, the third best player, in the league, and I think Beto, the fourth top scorer. I mean, Bontanali, sixth top scorer in the Premier League, only joined in January. He is going to be a contender for the Golden Boot next year. I mean, Haaland's still absolutely tearing it apart at the age of 31. Tyrone Nichols, who's uh, the um, Chelsea wonder kid, he's uh, tearing it apart as well. But I think we have to go and get Beto on a on a permanent basis once his loan ends. You know, he's scored a goal every other game. Um, let's continue on. The reason I brought us back was because the um, board have set initial budget. So we'll get an idea of how much we're going to have to spend in tomorrow's transfer special. Um, we've re-signed Jamal Gonzaga. We've got rid of his um, minimum fee release clause because he has been back to his best this year. Uh, got him on a brand new four-year contract uh, on £84,000 per week. He is going to be crucial for us over the next few years as we make the transition from 
what is going to be uh, a mid-table finish and, and a very safe mid-table finish. I don't quite know how we've done it, but um, I'm very happy we have. Let's see what we've got to spend then. Uh, oh, we'll take that. 1.8 million on the wage budget and another £43 million to spend um, in transfer spendsies this summer. We are committed on spending 1.5 million, so we've got 42 three million pounds to spend in transfer fees and we've got three hundred thousand pounds to spend on the wage budget that's easily four or five very very solid signings that we can bring in maybe one or two blockbuster signings um if that's the way we decide to go you know looking at the squad weird voice there uh looking at the squad i think we can spot where we need to um improve i think goalkeeper as good as hoy and hal has, has been this season i think we need a, a new goalkeeper in there a new left back that can cope with the attacking duties um more central defense reinforcements a new defensive midfielder to go alongside miles skelly I think it's it's going to be a two or three year project to get this team perfect in the way that we want it. But I think so many of them are going to be a part of this this team for so many years to come. You know, we've got them on long contracts. It's very very exciting to be a part of this uh, as a team that are going to stay together, stay settled, and hopefully um, get us towards Champions League glory. We have got some really top talent in there and I'm, I'm very excited for it so let's uh, continue on then we'll see what happens when all is said and done with the Premier League and well Bournemouth have gone and beat Man City so we're going to finish 13th in the Premier League in the end uh, very very happy with that it's obviously a record uh, finish for the club and very very safe and, and hopefully that's where we are going to be finishing next season. Man City uh, managed to finish fourth in the league in the end. Leicester finished fifth. What a shame for them. And Man United, what a performance from them to finish in seventh. I mean, they've had a meteoric rise after briefly dropping into the relegation zone earlier this season. They had a, a very nice rise back up to seventh in the league. Um, going down then Fulham, Brentford and Reading Crystal Palace must have won on the last day of the season they did, they beat Arsenal I mean what a huge victory that is for Crystal Palace they've beaten Arsenal so Fulham have snuck into the relegation zone uh, couldn't quite get over the line against Burnley oh what an unbelievable unbelievable uh, result and Brentford have gone after a long stay in the league um what a shame for them. What a shame because they were they were battling last season. They were sixth in the Premier League last year, but they go down um, despite... I am, uh, Are they in the Europa League final? Oh, my God, they're... Oh, my... <laughs> they could be a Champions League team. They could be a Champions League team in the Championship. Oh, my word. Well, doesn't that just show you... I mean, they've just been hammered by Tottenham on the last day of the season. Oh, I really want Brentford to win now and be a Champions League team in the Championship. That's hilarious. That's absolutely hilarious. But they've really bombed the Premier League this year, haven't they? I'll tell you what, Redden weren't a million miles away either. Sunderland have stayed up, so... Very nice to see. Quick look at the championship um, before we end off the episode. Uh, looks like Norwich have come back up after relegation last season um, and Leeds United and Wolves are joining them. So it, it's, um, yeah, looking very... Oh, actually, no, it's, yeah, playoffs. Yeah, so it's Norwich versus uh, Southampton or Nottingham Forest. Yeah. Um, Blackburn obviously went down last season, so they're not coming back up. But Wolves and Leeds United are coming back up. Have they got some good momentum behind them? It looks like they have. So, yeah, excited to see what the future holds. But that is all for tomorrow. We will have... Our transfer special, as always, looking to try and improve this team. We've got our new style of play now, all-out attack. 
we know that we need to absolutely strengthen in key areas to try and take this momentum and maybe even get a top half finish next season if you have enjoyed that give it a massive thumbs up down below subscribe for daily football manager videos and i hope you guys are having a wonderful day thanks for watching and goodbye